Hey, what's up guys, it's Lee. Now this video is for new professional portrait photographers. Those of you guys who are just establishing yourself as a professional and you wanna figure out the right equipment that you're gonna to need to capture those high quality images that your customers are gonna keep coming back for. Now in this video, I'm gonna recommend a solid kit for you so that you know where to start out and kind of build your kit from there. Now just starting right off, you're gonna definitely wanna have a full frame camera body, okay? I recommend starting with a mirrorless body. DSLR cameras are great. If you have a DSLR and it's full frame and that's what you have to start with, go ahead. If you are purchasing this equipment and you know, you're know you gonna be building your kit, I recommend a mirrorless camera, okay? Now I personally shoot with the Sony a7R 3 It's an older camera, I'm gonna upgrade soon, don't get on me. But there are other options out there like the Canon EOS R5, there's a R6, there's a Nikon Z6 uh, Mark II, there's a Sony a7 IV, um, and there's so many different other options out there that you can get into, but go ahead and pick your poison, figure it out, and that's where you wanna start when it comes down to the body. Next, we're gonna move on to lenses, but the, one of the things that I do wanna tell you is that camera bodies are important, but lenses are even more important. So you wanna spend most of your money on your lenses. The reason why is because you wanna have the highest quality lenses that are available to you at this point in time. Whatever, the, the best your money can buy, okay? That's what you wanna have. The reason is, is that camera bodies come out all the time. You know, you can easily replace your camera body, but when it comes down to camera lenses, lenses are gonna be with you a lot longer, so it's more important to have a much higher quality lens than it would be when it comes down to a camera body. Now, when it comes down to lenses, I definitely recommend having an 85 millimeter prime lens. Now, this focal length is gonna be ideal for portraits because it has a nice flattering perspective. It offers a lot of compression in your images. Um, you can really isolate your subject from the background and having something like an F1.4 or F1.8 like this one, it's gonna offer you some really beautiful bokeh as well. And that's really what you want when it comes down to getting some nice, beautiful portraits, okay? So this might be the first lens that you go ahead and get. And then next, I'm gonna say that you should definitely have a 50 millimeter prime lens as well. This offers a more natural perspective. It also offers you more opportunities to get more of the environment in your shot as well. So it gives you a little bit more versatility and the compression is beautiful. And it's really more true to what you see, like what your eye sees as well. And that's why I would recommend that. This for instance is a Sony G Master F 1.4. And this is a phenomenal lens, it's very sharp. It's, it's not too heavy as well. Now the next focal length that I recommend that you get as well, it might seem a little bit crazy, but it's gonna be the 70 to 200 f 2.8 now this is a very versatile zoom lens and it's 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 actually amazing at capturing portraits because you have different compositions that you can capture without actually changing your lens right it's it's going to give you the ability to zoom in to zoom out and really capture some amazing images now this lens offers some amazing compressions it's going to be unlike anything you can capture with any of these other two lenses that i talked about um, especially when you're on the more telephoto lens end of things as well. So I highly recommend that you have a 70 to 200, okay? Now, this is an alternative, it's, it's up to you, um, this next re recommendation, but it is actually a lens that I actually really enjoy a lot. But it is the 35 millimeter um, F1.4. This is by Sigma, okay? And this is an amazing lens. I actually feel like this is probably my favorite lens, to be honest with you. Um, but it's, it's, it's great because it gives you some nice bokeh, right? It's not extreme, but it also gives you a lot more opportunities for environmental shots. A little bit similar to the 50, but a little bit more wide. And I like the fact that it's a little bit more wide. And this is great for certain portraits, right? It's not gonna be ideal for every portrait that you take, but I think that if you're gonna get an additional lens, right? I would say that these three are where you should start but this 35 is also a really great lens to have. And so I would say if you have some money left over or maybe down the line, if you want to try out the 35, I think you're not gonna be disappointed. You might find yourself using the 35 and the 85 more often than the 85 and the 50, but that's gonna be up to you and how you shoot. So next we're gonna talk about lighting, right? Lighting is gonna be very important. Now, one of the things that are gonna separate you from other portrait photographers in your area is your ability to use off-camera flash. Now, off-camera flash is gonna really make your images pop. Off-camera flash is amazing. It really, really makes your images just so stunning. It makes them crispy. It makes your subjects look like they're just jumping off 
of the screen. It's crazy, okay? It's absolutely crazy. But enough of that. <laughs> what are some off-camera flash options that you should start with in your kit, right? Now, the first is gonna be, you definitely wanna have a flash. And I recommend a flash like this. This is a Godox V1 flash. Um, this is a round head flash. And this attachment on top, this is a mag mod, right? This is a mag grip and this is the mag spear. And I would say that this combination could be a great starting point for you, right? You're also gonna need a trigger, okay? This trigger will control the flash, okay? So you put the trigger on your camera and then you have the camera, you then you have the flash, you know, off camera. This can be a really great place to start. This mag spear, it does soften the light quite a bit. Um, but it can be a little bit harsh de depending on how close it is to your subject. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can shoot through an umbrella instead, or um, you can use a soft box as well. It's really up to you. So this is one option that maybe you might start with. Um, but another recommendation that I have for you as well is something like this uh, 8200, or this, this is actually by uh, Flashpoint. Godox makes the same exact model. They're literally the same thing. I don't know what's going on with it. But this is called the Evolve 200, it's by Flashpoint. Basically, it's an Adorama brand, right? But essentially, this is a strobe. This has a lot more power than you're gonna, than you're gonna find with your flash, okay? Um, so it's like 200 watts of, of power. Now, the recycle time on this is gonna be way faster than your you know, traditional flash. Even though the recycle time on this is really good, this is way better and this is more powerful. So this is something else I would recommend. You can also upgrade to like the um, like the 400 or the 600 as well over time, but I think that this is a great place to start when it comes down to off-camera flash. Um, now, if you have all these things, I think that you will take some phenomenal photos. Um, you're also gonna wanna make sure, of course, you have a tripod, some extra batteries, high quality SD cards, of course. But if you have all these things, then you are well on your way to being a for sure, professional portrait photographer. Keep in mind, of course, that all this gear does not make you a professional photographer. You still need to know how to take great photos, right? You still need to understand the exposure triangle. But if you're watching this video, I'm, I'm sure you have a good grasp on that. But this would be a kit that I would recommend that you start out with. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. If so, hit the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and then watch this video right here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.